Hi, I'm John Polino, and welcome to the show where we talk to restaurateurs, chefs, and we talk about things that you never really get to learn about. Why they're in the business, how long they're in the business, the struggles, the stories, and all those things. Today on the show, we got Giampaolo Grazioni, who owns the absolute famous Giappo ice cream. G Giampaolo is actually revolutionizing ice cream in this world, and he's really doing an amazing job doing it. Uh, welcome, Giampaolo. Great to have you here. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me. Uh, what so, a pleasure. I brag about you all the time because he's got probably the best gelato place in the world. Uh, and, that, and that's really hands down. You know, uh, he's ruined me for life because if I'm ever anywhere and I have an ice cream, and I'll taste it and I'll be like, oh, it's not even close. But it's true. Uh, and everybody knows it. So uh, welcome on board. And uh, so tell us, uh, I'd love to hear about you and about uh, growing you. up and your family in Italy. And I'm uh, Italian, as yeah. you are. Um, John and I, we, we've been friends uh, for how long now, John? Probably 15 oh, years? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm Italian. I grew up uh, south of Italy, uh, a place called Torre del Greco, between uh, Napoli and Sorrento. Um, I moved to New Zealand 17, uh, 17 years ago. Wow. Um, it's been a one uh, long ride. I've been doing Japo um, for 12, 13 years now. So uh, Japo started over on Queen Street over at the Civic. Exactly. Um, and that's where we met because we were neighbors. We were I had neighbors. Starks and you had... You had Starks. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I remember, I mean, the place <clears throat> always had these big lines outside or you'd do something crazy and all of a sudden there'd be 300 people showing up. You know, it's just, it just incredible. Um, you had, I think, was it your grandfather that was a gelato maker? Or? No, John. No? No one in my family no? uh, was really into cooking. Actually, a little bit like uh, Luca, mm. uh, they're the common friends that we have. Um, we kind of were very much pushed out of the hospitality business uh, because it was not um, meant to be good, you know? The, my mom, my dad always wanted us to study and uh, um, you know, probably go and find a job in a bank, be safe, uh, which is kind of what I did, uh, only to realize that that's not what I wanted to do. Um, and uh, I found myself here in New Zealand um, uh, trying to uh, change ice cream. Mm. <laughs> I, re I remember all the different translations. I mean, you, I think you renovated the place several times, didn't you? And, I and did. You always trying, and you were, the place was already busy, you just wanted to be better. Uh, John, I don't know if now better is really what I was trying to do and what I'm trying to do. Uh, it's, it's very funny and uh, for some people maybe quite counterintuitive. Um, I was trying to be me, I'm trying to be me. Uh, and most of the time I'm wrong. So I don't know whether better is the right uh, way to say it. Well, well, it always came out better. You Thank know, you, John. Even when you're wrong, I don't know where you're wrong, but uh, I mean, it's incredible. I mean, you, you, the lines are still huge, and you always, even though you did something completely different than what you were doing before, it just keeps, it just keeps getting better. It, and better. it has been um, quite a ride, and um, you know, we we moved from Queen Street to Gore Street, and we went from strand to strand, um, and we kept changing all the way through. Um, the the real um, ethos of what we are trying to do is really to change ice cream. Mm. And um, that comes with changing uh, things. People, 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 have, people don't like change, John. Between you and I, I'm now an expert because I've changed Java so many times. Yeah. Um, people are allergic to change. People yeah. are like, oh my God, you know. They, they are, um, we are men of habit. You know, we want the same thing. Yeah, and yeah. We want the, the safety of, the, of finding what we want. And um, I kept changing on and on and on, uh, trying to um, create something that was special and unique for the people I knew I was building it for. I'm building it for. Jabo is not for everyone, John. It's clearly not a normal gelato place. No. <laughs> Is that, well, you, it was never normal. <laughs> it was never normal, and now but more it, than ever. It's but, more like, uh, a, I don't know. But it, it was always incredible. Um, so 
you, you, you want to change things. What is it you want? I remember, you know, I remember years ago and you wanted people to hear music while they were eating something. That's still happening. Yeah. That, um, that research, then uh, um, now that we have the place uh, that we have, um, has been turned into a, a full uh, experience which um, has got bookings for the next three or four years ahead. Um, and it's called Music and Ice Cream Chef's Table Experience. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Essentially, um, it's a full degustation of ice creams and each dish comes with uh, all sorts of David Bowie and uh, Cher and uh, Metallica. And um, everything is paired in a way to enhance both the music, so the music sounds better, and the ice cream. <laughs> it's pretty, uh, it's pretty unique. It's pretty crazy. It gives you an high, even though you don't smoke anything and you don't drink anything. It's, uh, Do, doesn't everything sound better with a little bit of ice cream? <laughs> I, I, I think so. I think so. And that's why we did these two things together. <laughs> so what it, what are you working on now? So I know that you have uh, you have the the chef's room upstairs, right? Correct. And uh, you're doing a lot. I see it on Facebook. You're just doing an incredible amount of different things. What, what are you doing? Well, our creativity really got um, a, a boost uh, thanks to the opportunity of having an extra room dedicated to R&D, to research and development. John, the focus is only one. We are changing how people experience ice cream. This is why Japo exists, to show the world the potential that ice cream had that in the past 90 years uh, has been kind of um, put aside, you know, not, uh, um, not developed. We realized that the ice cream world um, is really dominated by two major narratives. On one side you got the Americans and on the other side you got the Italians. Both have done an incredible job, Americans to make it uh, demo, yeah, popular. Um, they organized the supply chain, those mega factories, they made the ice cream, um, and, they, and the lottery goes and picks them up, and you have it at home in your freezer, through the supermarket, you know, and our local tip top is an American way of doing it. And then you go to Thailand with their small shops, they call it gelados. Although I believe it's essentially the same thing. It's done differently uh, because it's done. Uh, hopefully freshly, uh, daily made, uh, the best one have a connection with local produce and farmers. So those two major narratives uh, have really told us what is ice cream in our um, imaginary, in our idea, in our world. And we said, well, the world does not need another place that belongs either to America or Italian. We need to come up with our own narrative. And what we realized is that uh, through our uh, studies that the reason why people buy an ice cream, John, uh, it's fundamentally uh, linked to three things. They buy an ice cream because it's hot. They buy an ice cream because it's a beautiful day. Or they buy an ice cream because they're, they're a, they're, they're, they are a sweet tooth. Or they buy an ice cream because uh, they're going out for dinner and uh, they want to have a dessert and so they choose to have an ice cream, okay? So those three or four reasons really come down to the main reasons why people want an ice cream at any given point in time. And we said, well, if we're going to do Japo and we're going to come up with something that is different from what the Americans and the Italians have done, we, we need to find a way that when people buy an ice cream from us, they don't answer to those questions. They come to us and the questions, the answer is different from the ones that I just gave you. And um, yeah, that has been our focus ever since. Uh, clarity in, in, um, in achieving this, in reaching um, the goal of changing how people experience ice cream and what they do with it, changing the function of ice cream itself, is all, all I do 24-7. Um, committed, dedicated to that dream, to change ice cream. Can I ask you a question? Does ice cream make you happy? <laughs> ice cream makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, especially every time uh, I, I find a new way or an engaging way for people 
to interact with it. Mm. That makes me happier. It's my, it's my nirvana. You know, it, it's amazing because uh, I know you from uh, probably just when you were about starting, you know, and uh, it's, uh, I'm always trying to keep up all the different things you're doing because it's just incredible. I don't know how you find the time to do all that stuff. It's, you know? it's very hard, John. Um, I have to say probably one of your greatest assets is, is having your lovely partner. 100%, John. I mean, she does everything, really. She's, um, she's all over, and um, she puts it all together. Um, she, yeah, she, I would not be able to do it without her, but not just that. You know, nothing would be possible. I know, it's, it's you know... It's, it, it's a lot. And uh, Anna Rose has just been amazing, because I see the hard work she does with you. This, this life is... Uh, and we also have two children, you know? And yeah, um, amazing. And... Uh, uh, <laughs> and we have no support from any family. I know you don't have family here. Yeah. Um, that's, that's my situation too. We have, you know, we have no family here and it becomes difficult, you know. I'd, I'd, I'd love my boy to grow up around family. Um, and you ha I know your daughter gets involved in your, your recipes as well, doesn't she? She does. From time to time, um, um, yeah, we, we, and we, we talk about um, what ice cream should become and what is the ice cream of the future and things like that, uh, they're both quite imaginative and um, yeah, I, I like to have fun with them and uh, to give them credit when I can. Do you, th do you think uh, she's leaning to follow in your footsteps? John, that's a very interesting question. I think as fathers, uh, um, our responsibility is should, um, should be limited on, um, on giving this our children uh, the opportunity uh, to choose. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, back in the days, uh, all the savings my mom had were invested in me sending me to school. Mm. Because back in the days, uh, choice will come after school, school first. And so I hope that when my kids grow up, um, Anna Rosa and I, we will be in the same position to offer uh, our children that opportunity the same way my parents have done to us, you know. Uh, I, I have no expectation for them uh, to follow uh, what Anna Rosa and I have done. Um, I actually uh, won't be a promoter of that, to be honest. Um, I, because. This is my dream, mm. you know. I'm changing ice cream, not them. Unless they want to, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it has to come from them and yeah. the, uh, it has to be their own initiative and uh, uh, their own energy, not just because the father has done it. Of course, they have an advantage, yeah. but that does not um, mean much. I think my father uh, would have done anything not to let me go into the restaurant business, but I just, for some reason, I just loved it. You know, I just enjoyed it, and I, I love entertaining and, and taking care of people. You know, it's just, uh, and you have to have that passion to be in this business, don't you? You, yes, 100%, because um, having um, contact with people, um, being always on, uh, on the edge, um, being innovative is um, it's tiring. It's uh, uh, sometimes nerve-wracking, um, but it's beautiful. And um, uh, our customers uh, love us, and we we show them the love by doing what we do. Jo John, is, um, it's it's a relationship. Mm. Uh, it's. Um, so you need to know what, what, to, what you do and how you do it. It's, it is what it is. Well, we're going to take a break right now, and uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back. Uh, we have uh, Gianpaolo on the show. So, Gianpaolo, um, you know, gelato, ice cream, what, what, what's, what's that all about? What's the difference? John, between you and I, mm. there is no difference. Mm. Um, they're both frozen 
uh, the cert um, essentially based on uh, some sort of milk, sugar, vanilla, chocolate, same ingredients. Uh, in Italy, we don't have two words for it. So gelato is what you find in the supermarket and what you find in a small uh, artisan shop. Um, around the world, when the Italians left Italy to open their own places, they differentiate themselves and they call themselves gelato because whatever was at the supermarket was called ice cream. Um, of course, they are different, as I said before, because um, gelato, especially when it's done well, it's fresh, daily made, has a connection with local farmers and producers, and ra 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 ra. Um, and while the ice cream is done probably, you know, on a larger scale with big factories, they are essentially done the same way. You know, talking about local farmers, I remember a long time ago. God, how long? That, was, that must have been. Ten years. A, yeah, 10, 11 years ago, you took me up to a farm up, up north. We went to Omaha. Yeah. To the guy that had just started the blueberry farm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it yeah. was a nice little uh, trip. Yeah, the blueberries. And, uh, it was nice. So, and, and, and you, you really wanted to know where your food was coming. You were one of the, uh, probably one of the first people to really work on that, you know, get in touch with the farmers um, and, and try to buy produce directly from these people. We um, still do that, yeah. but it's not the focus of what we do. Um, change, right? Mm. We keep changing, John. Um, I believe Japo today has a mission, and this is to show the world the potential that ice cream um, have to convey a message. And the message is the message of freedom. Um, back in the days, we weren't clear with our purpose. And um, of course, we were going by the books, the dogma. To do a good restaurant, you got to follow those things. To make a good ice cream, you got to follow those things. Now, uh, I, I, I look back and I understand I am the anti-dogma. You know, I am the bad guy. I am the guy that does it completely different from everyone and is coming out with his own way. Our main ingredients, John, as of today, if you talk about ice cream and gelatos, are ingenuity and imagination. We use those two ingredients in everything we do to answer to that question. Does it make, does it change the way people experience ice cream? Is this different from anything they've seen anywhere else around the world? Um, those are ingredients that often are, are not common in a kitchen, you know, because in the kitchen you find salt, pepper, sugar, eggs, the blueberries. And, um, but we try to give priority to ingenuity and imagination. Right, and you want to change because you want people to change and, and to understand what you're doing. But every single time you changed, you probably could have cloned that place, had it keep running, and then do a new one, and do a new one, and do. You would have probably had a dozen different uh, ice Thank cream you, shops. Thank you, John. John, I, I love each you, John. one of them. Each one of them would have been hugely successful because each one of them was. Um, it, would, it would have been amazing, you know, because people, like you said, they don't like change. They they love what you were doing, and then again, they love what you were doing, and then again, they. Uh, you know, you you. We are on earth uh, to find ourselves. Look what I'm telling you. And. Um, in the past 12 years, we've been looking um, what was New Zealand's role in the world of ice cream. You know, as I mentioned before, those two major dominating narratives, the Americans and the Italian, they really are everywhere. And we said, if we're going to just settle to be one of them in New Zealand, we might as well go and do something else. And so we said, what else can we give to the ice cream world that at Italians and Americans have not given? Can we come up with our own narrative? What are the main ingredients of this new narrative for ice cream that Italians and Americans, the dogma, uh, have not used? And those two ingredients were imagination and ingenuity. 
you know, uh, you're going to be surprised I say this. There were, you know, I always, in all my restaurants and, and businesses, I've always loved to try and help local charities you do, and things like that. You're incredible. But uh, you inspired me several times and just blew me away. I remember you selling uh, an ice cream for Haiti. It's Haiti, right? The hurricane? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I eat, yeah. And you were selling an ice cream for how much was it? Um, it was some with gold flake and Yeah, I think champagne. we did a lot for them. We raised about ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I remember you raised ten thousand dollars selling these ice creams to top executives and all, whoever they were, because it was an expensive ice cream, and you mm. did it, which was incredible. And then I also remember coming with you to Starship one day, correct? Um, because you 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 just filled them up with <coughs> presents and all. We still do some with them. Um, you know, we try to be a good citizen. You know, we citizen of the world. Uh, we operate out of New Zealand. But we understand that uh, we are interconnected everywhere. We are all brothers and sisters, John. Um, well, I, I just was so inspired by the things you do, and I actually tried to do those things as well, because you, you're a great man with a great heart, and, uh, and that really inspired me. Thank you, John. Um, you, you are a great inspiration for me, too. Well, thank you. You know uh, that. Thank you. Um, that's all you could ever w w wish for, isn't it? <laughs> This, uh, this is all it is. It's amazing. Um, so, you know, what... what and talking what? about change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're <What>? the king. <laughs> so what made you open up the first... Uh, the original. The, yeah, the original Giappa. What, what, what inspired you to do that? John, I was naive. Come on. <laughs> well, you know... I, I was naive. Um, if we weren't, we wouldn't do it, would we? I think it's the greatest uh, gift, no, actually. No, John, the answer is this. I'll probably do it again. Because I am of the understanding, and you tell me if I'm wrong. Look, it's been a very rough ride, and you know I've been sick and, yeah. and all of that. Um, but I think anything I had done, it would have been, it would have been exactly the same. You know, whether I would have been making shirts or, or jeans or shoes or... You know, I, I would not have done it the same way you were doing it. I would have come up with my way. So how did the spark come about? To, to, oh, I'm going to open up a gelato place. Well, <laughs> if you really remember the first Japo, we were more of a pastry shop, John. We were trying to, naively, trying to fit into a market that was not there. Mm. Um, because we thought... Uh, people would understand us, only to realize that uh, nobody really understood us and uh, the sales are, were very, very low. And so we, we focused and we started making ice cream only. Um, why did I do it? I would say because maybe I'm Italian and uh, being Italian, um, you know, you grow up with gelatos. Uh, it's that thing that you have every day, uh, and you know where I come from is summer, about eight or nine months a year, um, and so you pretty much have it every day, and uh, uh, it's something that you like. But never I would have thought twenty years ago that I would have ended up um, doing what I'm doing today, mm. um, with that sort of details and uh, intention. Now, uh, I know that uh, when uh, very famous people come to New Zealand, they somehow hear about your shop. Can you tell us about some of the people that have visited? John, we've been blessed and lucky. This has happened uh, mostly, mostly without my control. I would mm -hmm. love to, to have the opportunity to, to, to meet with these people. And um, sometimes they come and never meet with them. And, um, um, yeah, I never really know when anybody comes. Um, Recently you had, or just last year, you had uh, Cher. Yeah, Cher just came and uh, uh, you can't believe she's a good friend of ours now. Really? Yeah. Apparently she said that because uh, she's she loves ice cream, doesn't she? She's a great ice cream eater. And so when she was here uh, uh, recently, she she came to Japo twice and... Uh, wow, twice. Um, oh yeah. my God, that really tells you. I mean, she's, 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 she's the sweetest. You have no idea how sweet and how humble and how natural she is. 
And, she's uh, just like you and I, John. And you can have a conversation with her, uh, forgetting that she's the diva that she is. She's incredible. Unbelievable. She's unbelievable. And, and that, you know, that doesn't happen often, you know, especially in New Zealand. You know, uh, of course, when I had restaurants in New York City, uh, of course, uh, you know, a lot of celebrities come in. Um, but, you know, you don't really always get an opportunity to talk with them. Um, but I remember she was saying that uh, there was a big competition going between New Zealand and Australia, and she's then... So what happened, that was a funny one, um, because she, in her tour, she came to New Zealand first, and then she went to Sydney. And Sydney is big on ice cream and gelatos, and uh, um, Australian TV um, <laughs> must have offered her a, a, an Australian ice cream. And... Uh, <clears throat> And, um, and she said, um, and they asked her, since she had just had the Japo uh, the day before, and they asked her which one is better, kind of sure that she would have said Australian is better. But she said, no, nothing but New Zealand ice cream. And she mentioned us and... Uh, wow. Yeah, she, she's, she's what she is, you know. She's, but she's like that, she's very frank. She's very upfront. That's fantastic. That, and that's huge. That's huge. So you're, you've, you've, you've become famous more than New Zealand, which I'm sure. I, I, I mean, don't know about that. I mean, you know, it's, it's almost the number one place to visit uh, for tourists. It's, I, 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 I see the things that pop up on TripAdvisor and all. It's like, what are the things to do in, in, in Auckland? And you pop up like as number one. <laughs> That's amazing. John, it's hard work. You know what uh, it means. Of course it's hard work. It's it took you a long time to do that. And, it took us and, a long time to do that. And, and how many hours a week do you work? I don't count them, John. It's probably 80, 90. Yeah. We do yeah. 15 hours a day. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard work. It's hard work. It's, you never stop, you know. Is there anything you, you, you're, you're working on for the future that you want to tell us about? John, we're changing, you know, we're changing. Um, we really live on, uh, on a constant change. Uh, we live on the edge. Uh, and we feel every time we find a comfort zone is, is a good recipe to disaster. You know, uh, Gianpaolo, you, you, you've come at this business in a completely different way than most people would. Um, is there, uh, what advice would you have for someone new starting out? John, we are controlled by fear. Mm. Most of the choices we make every day are fear-based. Fear of being judged, fear of failing, fear of it may not work. And um, I, I, I found that Japo is, uh, is success. Its success is based on the higher we fight that fear, the more we fight that fear, um, you know, the better we become. So my advice uh, for anyone starting in the business is to fight your own demons. Uh, they're they are the worst ones. And uh, they live inside you and they, and they come to you in disguise of being uh, the thinking brain. Mm. But it's weak. Yeah, it's, they are the problems. Do what nobody has ever done. That's why you were here on earth, to show us your freedom. People buy the freedom you take. Have you seen that banana being stuck on the wall by that famous artist, mm. Italian artist called Catalan? Mm. You know? If you think about the fear that the guy had to fight to put the banana on the wall, call it art, sell it for 120, 120,000. <clears> and going through all the critic of this world. You know, if you look at my Facebook feed, John, it's full of people that don't understand that art because the art is to be like Michelangelo because they've been to the Sistine Chapel and they've been to the Louvre and they've been here and they know what art is. The real art is what the banana stands for on the wall. If you don't understand it, you can't criticize. What that artist is demonstrating to all of us is that his freedom to choose to do that is what we all of us should be standing for. So this is my advice to everyone. Be yourself. Fight your own demons. Fantastic. 
Well, you know, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Thank you, John. I think love that, you and your family and uh, everyone. And we love you too. You know that. Thank you, John Paul. Great to have you.